What's up, what's up, what's up? It's the incomparable Pook Diesel, and right now you are watching Rap Sheet Hollywood, where we bring you the liveest and the freshest commentary in Hollywood, but with a hip hop flair. And right now, today, we in the valley of the Los Angeles area, and I'm chilling with one of the finest, one of the most accomplished, one of the most distinguished artists in the game. He's one half of the loonies, and he's a soldier in his own right, the Raging General. Yiggy, yiggy, yuck, mouth. Yeah, what up, man. boy? You like that intro? You like that intro? That was dope, man. Appreciate the love, my G. Hey, Thanks man, that's one of the show, man. Man, it, you man. family, that's man. And, uh, you know, I'm just glad to be able to come kick it at your crib and come chill with you. Oh, and, uh, yo, I want to get into it, man, for all those new millennials out there that. You know, maybe they don't know the history, you know what I'm right. saying? But you, you've you been able to, you know, still bounce around and still do your thing and still survive in this game. You know what I'm saying? How, how long you been in the game now? Shit, 23, 23 years. 23 yeah, years. 93. Now, that alone should tell all of these, you know, one-hit wonders, all of these cats that's just coming out, this is longevity in the game, man. We got to celebrate our legends while we can. Uh, so, you know what I'm saying? The fact on. that you've been doing it, yo, and still doing it, I love it, man. Salute Thanks, to you, bro. Man. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah, man. it. No man. doubt. I appreciate the fans for even holding me down this long. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Hey, I so let's take it to the history, man. You know, for them, them young cats that don't know, you know, how'd you get started? Um, basically, I uh, started in a rap group in uh, seventh grade called Brothers with Potential. Me, okay. Numb Skull, and a few okay. other brothers. All right. And uh, junior high. Then we, you know, went to high school and the group split up. But it was only me and Numb who stuck together. Yeah. yeah. So um, me and Numb was in the streets wiggling and shit. And um, he ended up moving to Vegas. And I was just in the streets doing my thing in and out of jail. And I caught a long sentence for a year. Right. And um, it was in juvenile camp. Right. When I was in that camp, you know, that shit was like a rap fucking ultimate rap school really yeah cuz I mean every <laughs> day it. yeah every day we battling each other and shit so it the rap you know I had to have it every yeah. lunchtime every you know after dinner we had the rap contest was the battle in, was huh? going in so everybody had songs man yeah. like this dude from uh get low players that was signed to JT the bigger figure called okay. Demo yeah he was locked up man shout out to JT the bigger right figure, man. He, they, they been on you yeah, know what I mean man, so no JT doubt. Ben had his label going so yeah he had Demo up there mm -hmm. Debo coming up there lash you know he you know um you in camp you get weekends yeah so he going home on the weekend he coming back all fly with the fly shit and he coming back spitting dope ass raps Ooh. and he had this uh, one song called cancer stick uh -huh. And they taking this nigga like on a juvenile tour around from pie to pie, unit to unit to sing this cancer shit stick to cancer stick song to the kids. To the kids. You know, to motivate them not to smoke cigarettes. Okay. okay. So once he had this little song, I'm like, I need a song. I need something. I need so a piece of that. That's when I came with Ice Cream Man. It wasn't positive, but you know, around the, the camp. Yeah. It was the hottest shit in the it camp. Was it was filling it. Boom, when I came with the Ice Cream Man, I came also came with the group name, the Looney Tunes. Dope. And I mean also came with the um the condo man. I'm a cartoonist. So uh, when I got out of jail, I was looking for the you know the dopest rapper I knew, which was Numbskull. Yeah. Which, his name was Skinny One back then. Skinny you know, one. I called him Numbskull. Okay. I came out with the Yuck Mouth name, Numbskull name, and the Looney Tune name, yeah. and the logo. I had the master plan and the song, Ice Cream Man. <laughs> you came up with the whole came, blueprint. Yeah. Yeah. B before the much, blueprint, you had the blueprint. Had too much time to fucking think, man. Yeah. So <laughs> I blueprinted it up, man. I hooked up with Numb, man. And, um, we end up linking up with CNH, you know what I mean? And uh, the first, uh, you asked me Chris to spit a song, Hicks, right? Chris Hicks, yeah. yeah. He had an artist named Drew Down already. Mm -hmm. And uh, Aunt Banks, and uh, they was doing this album in Dangerous Studios already. Yeah, so uh, man, he told me legendary. to bust a rhyme. Legendary. And uh, the, 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 the rhyme I bust was the Ice Cream Man. So that's, that's how you got on. That's how we got signed. Letting them know that what's up. That song that was popping in the jailhouse yes. got us signed. Definitely. So, so when you came up with the Looney Tunes, I gotta first know how did you come up with Yuck Mouth and, and what does that represent? Cause I know, you know, people had to be asking, you know what I mean? Yuck Mouth, where well, does that come from? You know, it just means uh, nasty mouth, yeah. basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like Nas back in the day, when he first came in the game, he was nasty Nas. Nasty Not Nas. like Two Live Crew nasty, but yeah. his rhymes is nasty, mm, you dig it? So mm. my mouth is nasty, yuck mouth, yeah. nasty mouth. This, this nigga gonna spit some shit. You're right. You know right. what I mean? Numb skull, he's a knucklehead. You know what I mean? Uh, Numbsco always yeah. been a, a fucking knucklehead. Always been in his own ways, you know, <laughs> an asshole. So he's the perfect guy for the fucking. Shout out to Numb, man. For the that's my dude name, too, yeah. man. Numbsco is a fucking habitual asshole on purpose. <laughs> you know, that's my guy. I love him to death, but yeah. he's the Numbsco of the group. Yeah. So that's how I came up with it. So together, man, y'all come up with one of the most iconic smoking 
anthems ever, man. Oh, I yeah. got five on it, man. Yeah, People still good. banging that today, you know what I'm saying? Real Puffy sampled the, you know what I'm saying, the B used it too. Yo, tell us, man, how did that come about, man? I want to know, how did you come up with that joint? And then where did that song take you guys? Well, uh, shout out to Numb. Numb came up with the idea. Yeah. You know what I mean? Literally, I get that to him. We was, we was in the studio and shit. Um, and we was like, man, everybody got a weed song talking about getting high. Right. Man, we get high all fucking day. And we mm -hmm. like, man, nobody never talk. He was like, nobody ever talk about what it costs to get high. Ooh. And he was like, yo, let's make a song called I Got Five on it. He was like, look, I got five on it. It's dope. I got five. What you got, nigga? Right. I was like, damn, I think I got two bucks in my sock, nigga. And that's how it first started. We just going back to back, talking like we going to buy a sack. Ooh. That was the original verse. And that verse was like about 100 bars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Literally. <laughs> so, so <laughs> God, cut it, cut it, cut it up, Eventually. chop it up. So, um, you know, it's, it's in the day of the remake. Puffy is like yeah. headlining all the, the the hot remakes and shit from Mary J. Blige to Jodeci right. to everything. He's like doing the remake crazy. So um, I'm noticing that they did every remake, but motherfucking uh, why you treat me so bad? They that always the did joint. rumors. Right. They right. did the rumors, rumors. from Club Nouveau, yeah. but they never did why you treat me so bad. That so was hot. When it was our time to get in the studio, right. you know, I went and bought the record from uh, 40th and Telegraph in uh, North Oakland, mm -hmm. and I brought it to the studio, Tone Capone, and uh, Tone Capone, we, we played it, you know what I mean? Um, I said the hook, and he was like, nah, man, you know what I mean? We need to sing on that. He was like, yeah, I, got, I know the singer from Timex Social Club. Mike Marshall. Oh, I that dude, he's some of it? Yeah, he's oh, a background singer. Oh, snap. Yeah, so he said, I could get Mike Marshall. That's my guy. He Ooh. got him over, man, and he sung the, the hook and shit. The rest is history, The man. rest is the history, rest is man. Fucking history, the, the, man. The, the remix was bananas. Oh the Bay God. Area classic. Everybody, Everybody jumped man. on shout that. Who was on there? 40. 40. Shout out to Drew Down, Drew. Richie Rich, Spice One. Oh, man. You know what I mean? Uh, Shock G and Humpty Humpty. Oh, man. He made two appearances in one. <laughs> you know, but it's Alter ego, it came it was a through. Beautiful thing, man. man it, so it show unity. You that's know crazy I mean? that's it, because you know? at that time y'all had the bay on fire. You know what I'm saying? Thank and it was it was it was just kind of exploding. And uh, you guys was right in the center. Now, one thing that I know about my man Yuck, you know, you never shy away from controversy. You know what I'm saying? Y'all always had some, you know, some 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 beef or something going on. But real quickly, I know you probably squashed it now. Everything's cool. But at the time, it was a little something with short that was going on. Right, right. You, you want to talk just a little bit about that? Oh man, yeah. that, that that shit, man, was just a misunderstanding, man. Okay, okay. Um, I think it was us trying to ride for our record label. Right. It was really short having a problem with C and H. Right. And not us. Not you know what I mean? Right. And they they homeboys. They got they got some shit that they come from some shit that we ain't got nothing to do with. Right. You know right. what I mean? So they politics is on a whole nother level and we right. couldn't stop it. You know right. what I mean? But right. we felt the, the the hate, you know yeah. what I mean, with with the with the studio vibes, mm -hmm. with the you mm -hmm. know what I mean, as far as doing songs and collabos and right. shit. You notice too short sure wasn't on the album. Right. He wasn't on the remake. I mean the remix. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody he, else was. He wasn't on none of Drew albums. And we recorded both of Drew albums in Dangerous Studios at his studio. And Banks made Pimp of the Gear. Right. He made Drew that whole album crazy. But Short wasn't on one fucking song. So we like, okay, it's some heat coming from that couch. A lot of heat coming from heat, that couch. Huh? So, yeah. you know, we had to address it. That's all. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. we cool now. Of course. You know, that's the big unk. You know, we fuck with Short the long way. He on my new album. Okay. JJ Bass on the Bill Story 2, man. Shout out and listen to that goddamn... Uh, the fuck is that called, man? Bottle at the bottle, man. With me, short and E forty, man. So yeah, shout out short, man. Definitely, Definitely man. man. You know because we look, get into even the with all joint. of that, mm -hmm. like he, he didn't have to let Drew down record his right. fucking album in his studio. Right. Aunt Banks, he didn't have to let Aunt Banks do the production. So right. he was still cool. Right. But he didn't do all he could have done. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. That's right. all. I you mean, know. you know, this is hip hop, so it's always mm -hmm. gonna be a level of competition. Right. You know what always. I'm saying? So then Drew you know, down was coming on the pimp shit, and Short was the Mac. So. I, I felt uh, okay. that level of competition between them two coming up anyway. So right, right. I think that probably was it too, you know? No doubt, man. So, I heard you quote, man, and, and just talk about your longevity in the game. How many albums and projects have you personally been a part of? Because this, to me, is, is, is bananas that you could be in the game as long as you have and to be working as much as you have. You know, the, the people need to hear that, man. The, the rap, rap sheet Hollywood fans need to know about that, man. Well, basically, uh, my discography is crazy. It is crazy. It's but, bananas. But just albums, group projects, and compilations. Yeah. And I'm at uh, 
34 with this uh with this uh JJ. JJ Bill part, part two. No, 33 with the part two, and then the deluxe gonna be 34. So that's yeah. did you hear what this brother just said? 34 projects that he's been a part of. My you know face what I'm saying? On the Collaboration cover. with your face on the cover. Yeah. So not just, you know, just jumping on a song. Yeah, nah, you know what I'm saying? My face on the fucking cover. That means you that really part. put it together. Like it's obvious that you, you know, you're a a brainiac in terms of structuring all the all the projects that you want to be a part of, and you take it, um, you take the game by the hand, and you hands on with it. What do you attribute your success to, man? And being longevity, being something that you just can do, staying in this game. It's, it's a lot of cats out there that one hit wonders and they done. Right. But you just been going. What, what do you attribute that to? Well, let's say that again. Um, First of all, mm. you gotta have the passion for this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? You yeah. gotta have the 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 the, the, the fire in you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To wanna even make music. Right. You know what I mean? So right. when you say motherfuckers is a one hit wonder and they disappeared, yeah, because they lucked up. They didn't have the passion. They mm. was fucking around and mm. they stumbled on a gold mine. You know, and then, you know, that shit left. They right. couldn't stumble on another one again. Right. You know, with me. Um, shit, you know, I got the passion, you know, I wake up with, with, with hooks and rhymes in my head and I just got to let this shit go. Right. You know what I mean? I got to right. record and get mm -hmm. this shit off. So it's been that way since junior high. Right. You know what I mean? So I, I love to record. My dad was a bass guitar player. My oh, was that grandma, right? you yeah. know, she was a pianist. You know what I mean? Um, Music's in the blood. Yeah, it's in my blood. My dad put okay. a trumpet in my hand when I was eight years old. I know how to play the trumpet. You know how to play the, the trumpet? Drum, the bass drum. I used to play the cornet back in the days. Uh -huh, you know, so I don't know how to do that no more, though. Cornet. <laughs> no, the cornet. Oh, cornet. It's like a small horn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, that's back in the days now. So you know. I've, been, I've been musically inclined. You know, I used to... Playing, uh, I used to be in the band at the church. You know, what I mean, I wasn't okay. singing in the choir, but I definitely was in a choir band. That's what so I, I just been musically inclined, period, since since a younger man. So I got passion for this shit. That's why I'm still here. Man, you know? there's no question about that. You know, for you to be able to be doing what you've been doing, um, yo, your journey took you on a lot of places, man. You also was at an iconic South re record label. You know, uh, rap a lot. Yes. Look, you still yeah, repping. Yeah, Come on, still man. Rapping. This is trophies, man. man. You know what I mean? Tell this tell us real quick, man. Just a little bit about <laughs> name something that you learned from Jay Prince, man. Oh, the game. The game. Yeah. Period. Just the independent hustle and grind, man. Uh -huh. Just being over there, just seeing how they operated. You know, I, I soaked up a lot of game because not only did I have an artist deal, I had a label deal, joint venture. Right. You know, so I was the first one to put the DVD out over there. Ooh. You know, with the United Girls of America. Then, right. you know, right. all the other rappers start doing DVDs, but I put that DVD grind out with rap a lot. So when he seen me do that hustle, you know, he just spilled me with the game, period. And I used to walk up in the office, like I said, yeah. you know, I need a check, you know, right. for this, that, and the third. Right. And he was like, yo, do you want me to give you the fish or teach you how to fish? So mm. I'm like, yo, teach me how to fish. And ever since then, I just been getting my own fish, you know, on my own boat. <laughs> I can take that bitch out whenever I want right. to go fishing, you know what I mean? That's the whole <laughs> part of this shit, man. Yeah. You know, people don't get the game, man. These rappers think that, oh, I'm assigned to this record label, get this big ass advance, get these Bentleys and chains and man. You gotta recoup all you of that. Work for it. No, yeah. you know, you gotta work for it. Then right. you get the money. Then you could you know, accomplish those things. Right, but right. you don't get that when you just first sign and you ain't put no work in, you ain't sold no units, no right. nothing. That shit don't happen like that unless you came from another situation okay. where you was platinum already and mm -hmm. you move and then they're gonna, okay, we're gonna give you a deal for two million and this, that, and the third because you already proved that you were a platinum artist or some somewhere else. Right. But if you start from the start, it don't right. happen like that, it period. definitely don't happen like that, man. So, you know, here it is, you know, 2017 mm -hmm. and you still dropping fresh material man, to, man. JJ lit, man. Uh, based on the uh, Ville story part yes. one and two yes you banging them on head and you coming back with a three now first off I gotta talk about part one because oh. that was my joint good looking, yo good looking. shout out to uh sparkle you know what I'm saying ah, the, the joint that. 6 a.m you a know what I'm saying six the in the morning that joint and you had your sister in the video yes, you know what I'm saying yes. you rap yo man tell us just a little bit about that how's that working with your sister you getting her in the video she getting some shine time shout out to spark yo. man <laughs> that's my best friend and my sister man me I'm and her it. smoke too much weed together <laughs> anyway man yeah sparkle out man you know she gave us the location and she started in the video and her uh 
uh, and a little hubby. Yeah, 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 they yeah. Both yeah. Played Shout a out role. to uh, Kevon yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah too much. They played the, uh, the Fed up in there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it came out dope, man. Shout out Cuzzo Fly. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. Shout out my little homie Big Fendi. Man. You know what I mean? He was playing the little baby yuck in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shit was, was dope, dope, man. Yeah. You know, my, my thing is, you know, I just want to make little mini movies to, to my videos. It. You yeah. know, just make them make sense. A lot of people yeah. doing videos, standing in front of cars and shit, bitches dancing and twerking. Right. right. Like, that shit getting old. You know, I want to have substance, not only to my raps, but to the videos that come out with the shit, too, you know? Yo, you had a lot of joints on there that I was just continuously banging. You had the joint um, with Sebo. You yeah, had Sebo yes. on there. Shout out flip. to Sebo. Sebo and Flip. C yup, and Flip. Mm -hmm. And then you had uh, the joint with uh, Young Noble, man, in the yeah. ghetto. Yeah. And you replayed a lot of classic joints and just went in on them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Your producers, your team, I could tell the production was strong. Yes. That y'all was really going in, man. And like, you know, you replayed some of the, you know, like the Mob Deep joint or whatever. Mm -hmm. and you gave it y'all flavor on it and just mm -hmm. went in and you know the Nas joint, the uh, the ill. You know what I'm uh, saying? You yeah, went in. Yeah, so yeah. what was what was that like? Like what was I that mean, purpose? That what just, was that, the that just me being a uh, fan of hip hop. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And those are, are, are tracks I love. You know yeah, what I mean? Man. So shout out Nas, shout out Mob Deep. Those yeah. are classic tracks. Yeah. Shout out MC8. You know the Straight Up Minutes track that we, we did. That's a classic track. Killed it. So those, just like the Club Nouveau song. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. The songs that I love that mm -hmm. nobody we did. Yeah, I mean, people redid the MC8 one, but they ain't did the Nas they and the Mob Deep. And they ain't do what you did, and, you know and, what I'm saying? Nah, and how it, you put it together. how I put it together either, so yeah. no disrespect to any other artists who did it, but, you know, I had to put my own twist on it and just salute because this album is based on the 80s and the 90s, so I wanted to Dope. give it that feel, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, didn't want to have no trap sound and shit on here, you yeah. know, just strictly shit from that era, right. that sound. So yeah. I just wanted to take it back to that. That was the whole approach on, on the first one. The second one it's about the is uh, the, the new generation of hustling what they doing now mm -hmm. so you got the more of the you know the situations the subject matter of what's going down right now in the streets compared mm -hmm. to the first one that's talked about what's going down in the 80s and the 90s so right. it's just touching three generations of hustling you know what i mean all it's in one spike thing. you know what i mean so the old heads will listen to it and mm -hmm. the millennials will listen to it you're getting both lanes and one ooh -wop, you know i love that man you, you know? got jay hood on here you oh, know yeah. what i'm saying a little buster rhymes yeah. kid on here you know what i'm saying real mad classic lions, man. Mad i got mad the lion. jacket rest in peace I got Rest the jack on the there. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yo, had the man, God on there. You, you just know? keep staying grinding, bro. And I just love it more and more, man. So, you know, what's tell us about the deluxe? What's what's the part three? What's that well, all about? It's just it's just basically a bonus bonus album. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, bonus tracks. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, usually when people do a bonus bonus album, usually be like about two or three songs. You know, this is gonna be about eight eight uh, eight to ten songs. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> yeah. And it's just the the. The, uh, the blender. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you got these two flavors on one side, now you need to blend it together. Okay. So that's gonna be the blend. You know what I mean? I just it. blend it all together and just, you know, really put the end of the chapter on that so I could go to the next subject, that, the next album. You just stay you know grinding, I mean? man. I, I appreciate your hustle, man. I wanna talk about What's going on now, man? You just did a joint, you know, uh, for this uh, this new uh, album, this tribute album coming out to hey, pop, man. You did a joint. Okay, man. okay. Then, then <laughs> let me get on it. Man. Don't be putting that shit well, on me, hey, man. You doing power moves? Hey, you know? Money B and Mac Mall giving that heartful, you know. Um, tribute to pop right man. so right. you know talk a little bit about that you know i, I know you work with them cats before but when you heard they verses and, and you went in on yours man what was that like what was you thinking man when i heard them two dudes verses man i damn near cried yeah yeah you know i mean it was so touching you yeah. know what i mean because it's like they was talking to pop you know what i mean you know going down memory lane or how they kicked it with them and shit like that so it was right. a very emotional song mm. you know so when i came with my verse i just wanted to come with um a style that how Pac would come, you know what I mean? You just wanted to approach it how Pac would have approached it instead mm. of a memory lane type of, because everybody hit those two subject matters already. Right. So I just came with that that type of level on my on my verse, and the shit came out dope. Oh, you damn. you killed it, everybody. Ooh. Shit is hot, Ooh. so I can't wait till we do the video. Oh, shit. man, the video go bananas. Y'all make sure y'all watch that, man. So this is uh, what we're talking about is uh, the project. It's a tribute album, and this is going out to Pac, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the Don, you know, saying Machiavelli the and uh, you talked about uh, in the joint the time that you seen Pac tell us one of them rare stories <coughs> where Pac came up you know uh, I think it was the E40 video oh, shoot yeah. and uh, you know he came and played the <coughs> Mary, man talk a little bit about you know what that was like for you at the time you know saying bonding with uh with Machiavelli man, man. <coughs> that 
that was the, the be <coughs> best time I ever had yeah. with Pac, literally, because yeah. I mean, this him, everybody was at the fucking video, that Too Short Players Ball video, yeah, man. and uh, E-40, first of all. Yeah. Ice T, Jodeci, everybody. So, you know, Pac working with Jodeci, you know, on his album. So he's up there. He come up there with him and the Outlaws. He pull up in the drop top bins, the black one, black on black. Yeah. Outlaws killing in the black man. van. You know and, what I mean? And what year is this? This is like. This is 95. 95. This killing them like this that. 95. 90, I want to say 96. This is 96. Okay. This is 96. This is 96. This like is the Mac top Valley. of 96. Right. Yeah, this is right. Machiavelli. This is like right when he, you know, started the Machiavelli album. Right. Right. You know, he came through and, you know, he had all the, you know, Versace shit on, Versace rings. This is the first time we've seen the Versace rings and the Versace chain. Ooh. We ain't never seen it. Pop so he got. Yeah, he he was had Big ass Versace bracelets and shit. Yeah. Like, we like, God damn. Yeah. We got the Rolex. You know, we seen Rolex, but we ain't seen no Versace bracelets and Versace watches and Versace chain. That was new. So yeah. he got the Versace shit on this. You're like, ah, man. Fody, where the motherfucking tape deck at? That's what niggas had the tape players. Right. Where the tape deck at? Nigga, I got some shit. <laughs> Nigga, hella hype. Yeah. He throw the motherfucker in. He's like, boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. And nigga get to singing that shit word for word. He doing all the fingers uh, and shit. Uh, and the jury just uh. fucking, like you said, the diamonds, when they glisten, nigga pay attention. He doing this shit Ooh. and they really glistening like a motherfucker. He blinding everybody in that bitch, uh. man. But uh, just to be there for the, the debut. Yeah, you know what I mean? Nobody heard it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nobody. Right. Like We, we think it hit him up was like hit this hard as shit. Right. He played that Hail Mary. Niggas like, whoa, they ain't ready. They ain't Who ready. the fuck is this? Right. Yeah, so man, yeah, we just being there to witness the birth of Machiavelli before anybody was a blessing, straight right, up, man. man. So rest in peace, of pot to die. Man, just, just talk about you know the um, the Bay Area influence on pot. You know what I'm saying? Just from what you've seen, you know, from what you know. I mean, you was around during the time. You was there. A lot of these cats now, you know, they can only under they can only look at videos and stuff. You was there, man. What what kind of game did the Bay give this dude, man? Uh, Pac was was real real. Rounded, yeah, in the Bay. yeah. So yeah. you know, he was living in Marin. Yeah. You know, he was rocking the Vallejo with Mac Mall, Ray Love, and them. Yeah. Uh, Leela, what's her name? Uh, Layla, Layla, Layla Steinberg. Layla. Yeah. Shout out to Layla. You know what I mean, Shock G and them, Digital right. Underground right. in Berkeley. Yep. And then he'd be in Oakland with my cousin, you know, the Gov, right. Richie Rich, you know what I mean, and them dudes, you know right. what I mean, 415 right. and all that. 415. So, uh, yeah, he was just well, well rounded, you know what I mean? He was just getting. You know, so much game. You know what I mean? The game from how to be in the industry with Shock G going on tour with them. You know what I mean? Right. How to, you know, do a show, you know, yeah, perform, man. how to make songs and shit. You yeah. know, learn the gangster shit in Oakland from my cousin, the Gov and Richie Rich. You know, how yeah, niggas man. really move in the town. Really? You know? Real business. Um, you know, just just taking his uh his his, his uh career to the next la level with with Layla. Yeah, you know what man. I mean? And, and everybody else, you know, with Shock G and them, so I think the game that he got, you know what I mean, attached with, with his acting skills and everything that he learned in Baltimore Took it. Yeah. is, is who, who Pac is, what gave him all them different dimensions, you know what yeah, I mean, man. when he rap, when he could rap about Brenda's got a baby, or he could go to hit him up, or he could go to, you know what I mean, uh, fuck the world, or he could go to, you know yeah, what I mean, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, yeah, Pac had too many dimensions in him, you know what I mean, because he was too seasoned. Two Period. seasons, Two straight seasons. up, and he was just determined, man. What does Two it mean seasons. to uh, have him go into the hip hop uh, or to the rock and roll hall of fame as a hip hop artist, the first solo hip hop artist ever to go into the uh, rock and roll hall of fame? What that mean, man? That's huge. Yeah, you know, a big, big accomplishment for hip hop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if anybody need to be in that motherfucker, it's Machiavelli to die, yes, Tupac, because he was very iconic, not yes, just. Sir. His lyrics. He was like the Elvis Presley, the you know what I mean, the Dean Martin, you know what I mean, the yeah. shit, the Michael Jackson, the rap. Yeah. Period. Yeah. That's how famous he was. He was, <laughs> yeah. man. You know what I mean? He so, dated uh, Madonna, my dude. So, you shit. know, how much more famous could you get? You know I what I'm saying? Shit. At that point in time. His, his hit list was crazy. <laughs> yeah, his hit list was crazy. Crazy. <laughs> you the ladies love pop. Check this out. Yeah. Drew Down was dead uh -huh. when Faith came to this nigga hotel room. Oh, you about to go there? I'm just saying. Who <laughs> could tell you that story? All I know is that. Okay. I don't know is Pop said, Nigga, wait till you see him coming to my motherfucking room. What? He said, hold on, nigga. Yeah. And nigga said, answer the door, Drew. And Drew answered the door. It was motherfucking Faith, man. Wow. Drew was like, all right, Pop. And he left Faith in. He walked out. 
backpack came out like, get me go do this shit. It went back in. <laughs> Real spit right there. Man, Tupac, but that, that, I don't yeah. know what happened, but he really had faith at his hotel room. So, I mean, you could just put two and two together. Yeah, you know what I mean? Rest in peace to Billy. The man, Pac was the man. The ladies love Pac. It's that's like, official you know, tissue, my G. Official? Okay. Who was that? Who was there when she pulled up? Damn, As you got to get the exclusive Drew Down interview. He hey, gonna I need that whole next. shit. I need that man. next. Tell you know, Rhapsody man. Hollywood, we need that Drew Down. Drew Where you at? Dead. You got to connect this. That's so why the that next happen. day they went to the studio, Drew was on. You wonder why he called me bitch. Remember, oh, he did the that's intro. Right. That's why. Because he was there. He was there. He was fucking there. <laughs> Yo, man. Yo. Rest in peace to Pac, man. Yo. Shout out Drew, man. Rest in peace. No <laughs> question. Um... What you think about this this Funk Master Flex rant, man, on pop? You know, I mean, we gonna go to we gotta talk about the current, man. You know, everybody got their opinions. You know, what I'm saying shooting out different stuff. What's what's your what's your, what's your take on that, man? It seems like Flex kind of been hating for a while, but now you know it's like 20 years later, and he's speaking on the man. You know, say rest in peace. You at, know. The end, at the end of the day, man, Flex knows it's like the ultimate disrespect. Like you speaking on a dude that's dead. You, right. You know what I mean? Like you putting business out there that's not true. Right. Um, you're speaking down on the legend, you know yeah. what I mean? Like the movie about to come out, everybody in good spirits, yeah. having good thoughts and memories about right. Pop. And you over here like just pissing on his name, like all his all his accomplishments, right. you know what I mean? And just right. trying to, you know, paint him up as a clown. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, man, Flex, man, this is a message from me to you, man. You was an iconic DJ, boy. You looking bad out there right now, man. You looking like a hater. You look disgruntled. You look like you mad because Hot 97 ain't popping like it used to. You look like you mad because you ain't popping like you used to. I mean, it is what it is, bro, but don't get mad at Pac. Right. Don't get mad at the West Coast. Don't say Pac had Biggie Kilt and all this crybaby shit you doing. Just, man, be a man. Man up. Make the station better. You know what I mean? Make your life better. Make your shit, your situation better and quit hating on everybody else, man. Because Pac is iconic. Pac is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yep. You will never be in the Rock and Roll Hall of never. Fame. Right. Niggas will never make a documentary, a movie biopic about you. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? Period. So, mm. funk, you got to know who you are. You're a DJ, you're a legendary DJ, but the days of the DJ is over. It's all about the computer. It's all about downloads and streams. So. You almost out of a job, my G. So good <laughs> luck, man. Straight up. That's all I can say about that, brother, man. And God bless you, man. No hate. But come on, man. You know that's utter disrespect, my G. Period. And everybody else speaking on Pac, man. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Because if Pac was alive, they wouldn't have said the shit. Pac was a hothead. Pac talk going, talk in, about Pac it. going in your grill. Talk, talk he about going it. in your grill, nigga. He taking dentures out. <laughs> period. So... Pop was alive. He was up mm. at Hot 97 a thousand times. Flex right. never said this shit in his face. Mm. Never. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like when a nigga day, you tough. You tough talking. But right. when this nigga was here, you know he pistol whipping people. You know he would shoot you. Mm -hmm. And he would beat your motherfucking ass. So you wouldn't say that to Pop in real life. That's straight up. Is, so we gonna end it on that. Yeah. Period. Right. Straight up. There Niggas know the real. Straight up. The movie's coming June 16th, All Eyes on Me. There's a, a A and E documentary that we are part of that's coming out. It's called Who Killed Tupac. It's gonna get to the bottom of it June 26th. And uh the homies, the outlaws, they dropping the album, you know what I'm saying, right around the same time, you know what I'm saying? The last one standing. And then you know what I'm saying, you got music, man. More stuff that you drop is so Yo, it's, it, Pac is always in the air, but uh, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's up to us to keep it moving and keep it uh, keep his legend alive, man. Yes, so sir. thanks to cats like you that's steadily grinding. Yiggy Yuck, man. Thank, thank you, you man. for thank sitting you. down with us at Rat Sheet Hollywood and getting man, it popping, man. Anything last you want to say? Anything you want to, you know, let the people know? JJ, based on the Bill story. That's right. One and two. Both in stores right now. All digital outlets, man. Support the mob, man. You yeah. know what I mean? And, yeah. um, Elegant Thug on the way. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. The new loonies. I break stack over two on the way. Okay. And then me and uh Sebo, Thug Lords, on the way, man. So we working, baby. We I love working, you, man. man. Thank y'all for it. having me. And uh shit, man. Yuck mouth. Yada. But that's what it is, Rap She Hollywood. When we bring you the live, it's the freshest commentary in Hollywood, but with a hip hop flair. Y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button and y'all make sure y'all support my man Yuck Mouth. That's what it is. We signing out. Salute.